Welcome everyone. Today I'll teach you time complexity in depth but also without any complex maths like you may see in other videos like differential equations. I will also show you how you can roughly estimate the actual time an algorithm takes just by looking at the code. First of all, what is an algorithm? It is a piece of code a programmer writes but don't want to explain. So he calls it an algorithm. So you have written an algorithm. Now how do you know if it is fast or slow? Well, fundamentally what it depends on is the number of CPU cycles it takes, the memory accesses, the I.O. and all that crap that we can't measure without actually running the code and having a bunch of tooling around it. But we don't want an analysis that is accurate down to the nanosecond. We just want a general idea of how fast or slow our code is. A rough estimate to see that is to see how many statements it will execute. Now not every statement takes the same CPU cycles. Each of them are made of different number of assembly instructions and have hidden costs like cache misses. But we can assume they are fairly equal. And now we can count how many instructions are performed. Let's count the number of instructions for this accumulation function which sums up an array. Because of the loop there are n plus k instructions where k is 3 or 4. Ok, so now we know how many instructions it takes and it mostly depends upon n. Let's say n is pretty big like 100,000. In that case k is negligible. And so the number of operations it takes is in order of n. And that ladies and gentlemen is its time complexity. Big O of n. Big O being the notation. Now if I had written similar code but this time with multiplication this also takes n plus k instructions. And so with big n k becomes negligible and our time complexity is again big O of n. However in practice this code is actually slower than our previous code and the reason is that multiplication operation is slower than addition. Let's say addition takes 4 CPU cycles and multiplication takes 8 CPU cycles. Then you can see that addition code will be approximately 2 times as fast as the multiplication one. So you might ask why don't we have that in our time complexity. Like for addition we say big O of time to add multiplied by n. And for the second, big O of time to multiply multiplied by n. And the reason is, if you make n big enough, this difference will become negligible. And when does that happen? That's right, at infinity. 2 times infinity is still infinity. And that's why we call this asymptotic time complexity. It tells us the time when the size of our input reaches infinity. And when the input reaches infinity, it becomes the bottleneck and every constant time operation essentially becomes the same because all of them are negligible in front of the bottleneck. And that is why if we have an algorithm like this which has n loops inside n loops so that is n times n instructions and uh, then 5 times n instructions its time complexity might seem to be big O of n squared plus 5 times n but since n tends to infinity 5 is a constant it becomes big O of n square plus n. But since n is a non-factor in front of n times n, the time complexity ultimately becomes big O of n square, which is the major factor, which will overshadow everything else when n tends to infinity. Now you might be thinking, I never have infinite data. So why is it useful? And the reason is we often have millions of data points. And when you run an n square and an n algorithm on million data points, the time difference between them is massive. The time complexity starts to matter a lot. Let me show you how you can calculate how much physical time this will take without running the code. So a normal modern computer can do about 10 to the power 8 or 1 E8 operations in one second. It is a rough estimate but it is very useful for online judges like code forces, at coder, lead code, code chef and also your computer. So if an algorithm takes O n time and n is a million, you can assume it takes 1 e 6 ops and your CPU can do 1 e 8 ops in 1 second. So if you divide 1 e 6 by 1 e 8, you get 0 0.01 seconds. And so your CPU can do this in about 10 milliseconds. And if we compare this with the actual results benchmarked in our code, we can see it is not off by much. Now since constant factor difference like addition and multiplication is not totally vanished in scale of millions, you can still consider them and as you can see this does play a role and multiply code is much slower but not that much. Now let's say we had an n square algorithm. How long will that take? If n is a million n square is 10 to the power 12 and if you divide it by 10 to the power 8 you get 
10 to the power 4 seconds that is about 2.7 hours you can run it for yourself and see how close the estimate is so now you can make your own decisions if you should consider time complexity because now you have a reference point of how many operations come in a second so you can judge if the size of your input will require you to optimize for time complexity or if you need micro optimizations this graph shows how fast the different time complexity grows and as you can see we have log n then n then n log n and then n squared is much bigger and n factorial is just crazy. Now let's take some common scenarios and algorithms and see their time complexity after which you will be able to figure out the time complexity of pretty much every code you will encounter no calculus required. But before that please make sure to subscribe if you are still watching you are probably finding it useful. So for this code we have n square as we already discussed due to n times n operations. Similarly for this we have n times n times n so n cube. Now for the next example let me first of all tell you some basic maths. If you divide a number n by 2 repeatedly how many steps will it take to make it 1? Let's try with 33. 33 divided by 2 is 16, divided by 2 is 8, divided by 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2 and divided by 2 is 1. So it took 5 steps, which is log 33 to the base 2. Now why does log come in the picture? Well, log just means to how much power should you raise a number to get some other number. So conversely, it is also how many times must you divide a number by some other number that is our base in log to get 1. And so we get log base 2 here. Now using this, we can conclude that binary search, which first considers the entire array, then half of that, then half of that, then half of that, until we reach one element to have log n time complexity, because that is log n steps. And every step is a constant time operation. Similarly, we can find time complexity of merge sort. If we graphically draw the merge sort process, as you can see, the depth is log n, because it keeps going as long as n can be broken down into two parts and at every level we do order of n computations that is the merging so total is the area of this rectangle n times log n now let us consider this divide and conquer algorithm here we first do n operations then n by 2 then n by 8 and so on now as you can see there are only log n terms and every term is less than or equal to n so a loose upper bound is n log n like previous and to find a tighter one you can just solve this harmonic progression if you like but n log n is also a very decent bound so with this hopefully now you have a proper understanding of time complexity and how you can do the analysis of 99% of the cases without calculus or some master theorem or something like that and also hope you can make your own decisions whether you should optimize for time complexity or constant time optimizations and with that bye